Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how to use and set up the Coinbase wallet. So in order to do that, you'll have to go in your mobile app Play Store. Here I am on my Android device. So if you go into the App Store and search for Coinbase, you will see multiple applications related to Coinbase. First, you'll see the main application called Coinbase Buy and Sell Bitcoin, this one. Crypto wallet, but this is not actually a crypto wallet. This is the application where you can buy and sell Bitcoin like it says in the title, but you don't want to store the coins there. You don't want to store the coins in the exchange on the platform that buys and sells Bitcoins because you are not really the owner of the coins when you do so. You just hold them there in that account and Coinbase owes them to you. This means that in case Coinbase it's hacked or if uh, suddenly Bitcoin or a cryptocurrency is banned in your country, Coinbase can shut down your account and can lock access to your coins. But fortunately, they offer this wallet here down below, Coinbase Wallet, Crypto Wallet, and DAP Browser. This is the actual wallet where you can store your coins and you are the owner of the coins. Once you send funds to this wallet, you are the real owner of the coins. And if you want to choose and move the coins from this wallet to another, you'll be able to do so easily. So in case something happens with Coinbase, you'll come into this application, the Coinbase wallet, and you'll be able to freely move your coins out of it. So that's the difference between the two. Coinbase is the application where you buy and sell Bitcoin. Coinbase wallet is the place where you should store your crypto. And by the way, even a mobile app, it's uh, not the safest way to hold Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. The safest way to hold cryptocurrency, it's in a hardware wallet. But for easy access to your coins, a mobile app, can be perfect to get to know uh, the system, to be able to have coins readily available when you need to. And uh, an application like this, like a Coinbase wallet can be good for that. But before we dive in in the Coinbase wallet, let me just quickly choose a winner for my Bitcoin giveaway. So I'll pick my today's winner from the video where I reviewed the Exodus wallet. Let's see how many comments I got. There were 69 comments and drum roll please. And the winner is Faith Hope. Congrats, Faith. You said, for me, that is the best Bitcoin wallet. I'm glad you think so. Congratulations on your $10 worth of Bitcoin. I'll contact you so you can leave your uh, Bitcoin address where I can send the funds to. If you didn't know, you can easily win $10 worth of Bitcoin. If you like this video, leave a comment below, but be sure in the comment to have the word crypto grabber. Otherwise, you won't be eligible for this giveaway. Let's go back and check out the Coinbase wallet. So I'm going to install it and see what this app is about and how we set it up. By the way, I wouldn't keep in this um, mobile wallet, in any mobile wallet for that matter, more money that I would keep in my pocket. For example, if I'm not going to keep $100,000 in my pocket, I'm not going to keep 10 Bitcoins in uh, this Coinbase wallet. If you have the 12 word recovery phrase from another wallet, you can easily switch from that wallet to the Coinbase wallet, or apparently you can restore from Drive. That's the first time I, I'm seeing this. It's not very common in the space, but I guess it's an option. The most important part is whenever you create a wallet is to back up this 12 word recovery phrase because this is the only way for you to restore your coins. And this is very, very important. You'll see me do it for this Coinbase wallet as well. The first thing I'm going to do when I enter the wallet is to find this uh, backup phrase and you should keep it safely, secure. Don't treat it lightly. Make sure you have proper backups for it and you know how to uh, get it when you need to restore your wallet. Create a new wallet. Here is some legal stuff. Make sure you understand it and then click accept. It asks me for a username. Uh, in case we both use um, this Coinbase wallet, it will be easy for us to transfer crypto from one another only by this username without us knowing the full uh, cryptocurrency address. That is just a combination of letters and numbers. It's a long string of characters. We don't need to know those addresses. We can use this username instead. So I'm going to choose Crypto Grabber. I prefer it to be private. So it appears that some other people can search for my name for Crypto Grabber and send me coins if they want to. But I don't like that. I like to keep my wallet private. So I'll just click on private. And then I have to choose a way to protect my wallet, either fingerprint or create a pin. I'm going to use the fingerprint for this. So here we are in our wallet. The first thing I'm doing for every wallet that I'm testing out or for every wallet that I'm using, I need to go and create uh, the backup to find my seed phrase. So I'm going down here in settings and uh, click on recovery phrase. Right now I have my recovery phrase here. I'm going to take a pen and paper and write them down. I'll make sure that I know how to access this backup phrase 
in order to restore if ever I will need to, to do that. As I said before, here I have the option to back up to my Google Drive. I'm not keen on saving my uh, recovery phrase digitally because uh, that digital data can be uh, hacked, uh, it can be corrupted. So I don't make that my first backup option. But in case of Coinbase, it seems that they encrypt this information. And if you want to save it on cloud, on Google Drive in my case, probably if you are on an Apple device, you'll be able to save it on iCloud. You can do so, but you have to set up a password for that. But again, I'm not going to make this my first backup. This can be a secondary backup. Let's see what happens if I click on send. I have two options to send from my Coinbase account or from another wallet. Let's select first from another wallet. And this is actually the wallet that I'm holding right now, the Coinbase wallet. It seems that it has uh, support for a lot, a lot of coins, many coins that are available right here. But let's go back and select uh, Bitcoin. I'm not sure why the screen showed up because I selected to send Bitcoin, not to receive. Probably because it knows I have no funds in my wallet. It redirected me automatically to receive some uh, coins first. So I have two options of addresses. The SegWit address, it's a faster and a cheaper address compared to the legacy one. If I click on legacy, you'll be able to see it here. Usually the SegWit address, you'll be able to recognize it by um, the characters that starts with, which is BC1. And if I go to legacy, you'll see it starts with uh, with a one. Before I send some funds here, let's see the dApps tab. It says explore the decentralized web. Dapps are decentralized apps or applications that are powered by decentralized protocols. I'm not going to dive uh, big into this. You can come here and explore the, the options that you have. But basically it's just a browser that uh, gives you access to the most popular applications that are built on a blockchain, on the Ethereum blockchain. And going into settings, let's see if I click on my username. It tells me if I'm public or private. I don't see any option to change my username from here. Going back, we checked the recovery phrase before. If I choose app lock, I can choose the lock method of my application and I can enable fingerprint authentication to open the application and also for transactions. I can connect to Coinbase if I want to, but uh, for me, this is a privacy concern. Uh, if I do so, then Coinbase will know everything that happens with my wallet. So my wallet will not be private anymore. Coinbase will have access to my wallet to see what kind of funds I have in it. So I prefer to keep my, my wallet private and not connected to Coinbase, but probably this will give me extra functionality in the application. Okay, so here I'm in my Coinbase account. I uh, transferred $10 worth of Bitcoin. And if I go back to my crypto wallet, I'll use uh, the maximum amount and I'll click on continue. So I'm not able to choose the fee that I'm willing to pay, but uh, it's not that bad, 12 cents is uh, just fine. So I'll just choose to transfer to the wallet it appears that because I have two-factor authentication in my Coinbase account, I have to enter the code. It's very unfortunate because I cannot paste it in, so I have to write it down. And transfer was initiated. It can take a few minutes for the transfer to complete. In a few moments, it should appear here at least that uh, it's pending that the funds are coming. But until then, let's just check the other settings. So we have advanced settings, active wallet. It appears that I can have up to 10 wallets in this um, application and then I can choose the active network. If you are a developer and if you want to test the, the network, you can do so. But for beginner, normal users, you won't need to, to go in, into that section. I can check the version and change the currency. So the coins are not in my wallet yet because it can take a, a bit, at least 10 minutes to, to show up in your wallet. That's normal for every Bitcoin transaction. And because this wallet it's an external wallet. Even though it's tied with Coinbase, it's still an external wallet that you hold. You own the private keys. You are the owner of the coin. So that means it will take time to, to get into the, your wallet, just like you transfer funds from Coinbase to another external wallet. It didn't take that long to receive the coins in this wallet. So far, I'm impressed on how fast the coins were available in, in the wallet. Another option that appears here is to earn interest on your crypto. I click on that, earn interest on your crypto. Earn interest by lending out your crypto with smart contracts. These contracts are blockchain-based applications that accept your crypto and lend it to the borrowers who pay interest. Interest rates fluctuate dynamically based on supply and demand. I can now see what are the returns that they that they promise 
and what, which coins they support. The returns are pretty low. I wouldn't use this, um, this staking service offered by the Coinbase wallet because there are other services like Crypto.com or Celsius Network that provide much, much better returns than these ones. For example, in Celsius Network application, you can get 9% interest for USDC, for the USD coin, and even more than that using the Crypto.com application. But going back to my Bitcoin, if I click on it, I can send and receive. If I click on the transaction, I can see how this transaction took place. It says that the amount was $10.85 and the minor fee was $6.91, but that's not right because I only sent $10 worth of Bitcoin from my Coinbase account, so the fee couldn't be almost $7. Minor fee was the total of the transaction, not what it charged me. Let's uh, click here on view on btc.com. So I was right, the fee was for the entire transaction for the entire block creation, not just for my uh, only transaction. So the minor fee is totally um, misleading. It doesn't show you the amount you were charged for this transaction. If you want to receive more Bitcoin, this is your Bitcoin wallet. You can see the addresses that um, I showed you before. And then if you want to send some Bitcoin, for example, you want to cash out your Bitcoin, you are holding your Bitcoin in this wallet and you want to sell it, you will have to send it and uh, you'll choose the maximum amount or whatever amount you want. You can select uh, the dollars amount or the Bitcoin amount that you want to send. You'll click on next. You can either select the username, like for example, before I selected to be private, but if you wanted, you could select my name from here and uh, send me funds. I can see a lot of people buy their usernames, so I can choose to send the uh, crypto to these guys if I wanted to. Or you can paste in the Bitcoin address that you want to send to or scan the QR code and send the, the funds like that. But because I connected my wallet with my Coinbase account, I'll just click on Coinbase and uh, this screen will show up. It will tell me the details. The minor fee will be 0.38. So I make sure I send the right amount. I make sure I send the to the correct address and then uh, I click on send. And it let me know that I just sent those funds to my Coinbase wallet. And that's pretty much it. It's a basic wallet doing the basic things that you'll need. It looks like a good wallet for me. The problem with it is that it's not open source, so you don't know how legit the code behind the wallet is. So you'll have to trust Coinbase that they have good intentions to create a safe and secure wallet. Other than that, uh, I don't like that you are not prompted with the recovery phrase right away in order to back it up and be sure that you have access to the backup phrase in order to restore it whenever you need to. And I would love to see more wallets that have the ability to change the transaction fee within the wallet, but that's not the standard. It's just one thing that I would like to see. For beginners at least, that's not a big issue because uh, you want your transaction to be uh, confirmed and processed right away. So setting the transaction fee will delay that process. So maybe it's not a good idea for beginners to start and uh, play with the transaction fee. Also Coinbase makes it easy for you to connect your wallet to your Coinbase account to be able to easily transfer funds between the wallet and your, and your Coinbase account. But I will not do so because I like my privacy. I don't want Coinbase to know what kind of funds I have in my wallet. So I would turn that uh, feature off. Let me know in the comments below, what do you think about this wallet? Are you using it? Are you planning to use it? Are you going to give it a try? Let me know what you think about the Coinbase wallet. And also by doing so, you'll be able to enter my Bitcoin giveaway. I give $10 worth of Bitcoin for free. If you like this video and leave a comment Comment, but be sure to include the word crypto grabber the name of this channel in your comment in order to qualify for this giveaway that's it for me for today i'll see you in the next one